me to call Brother McMurtry, right? I think I'm going to be calling Pastor McMurtry. Yeah, it is. To talk to him about uh, Cameron Javanelli getting arrested. Praise the Lord that uh, this bozo is er, – he's not even a bozo. This this wicked devil, this reprobate is being punished. So let me find uh, Brother McMurtry's number here in Skype and give him a call on video Skype. I think he's pretty up on that situation, so we can check in with him and talk to him about it. And, you know, these scandals, when they happen in the independent fundamental Baptist movement, and we see these predators, whether they be committing statutory rape, molestation, committing adultery with the the wives of the members, whatever filthy, you know, awful things that they're doing to prey upon innocent people in the church, these sexual predators, they need to be taken to task. They, they need to be turned over to the police. They need to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And everyone needs to be warned about them. OK, and it shouldn't be like the Catholic Church where it's swept under the rug. So I think Brother McMurtry is here. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Can you see and hear me? I c- yes, I can. OK. I'm my screen's doing something weird, but as long as you can see and yeah. hear me, we're good. So what's going on? Tell me, tell me what the deal is with uh, Cameron Javanelli. Yeah, so he uh, was arrested. Um, he, you know, he's out on bail. Uh, they let him go. You know, he's agreed to appear for court and everything. But you know, they are bringing charges against him, so that's great. And um, you know, so I'm assuming if they're gonna go through all the trouble of, you know, go, taking him to trial and everything, they must feel like they've got the goods on him. So. Hopefully, uh, he's going to go to jail so that and uh, get locked up for a while. Amen. Yeah, us- usually when they prosecute someone, they at least feel like they have enough evidence. So hopefully, uh, you know, we would love to see them hang him high, but that's not going to happen. But at least, you know, the fact that he's being punished, he's being exposed, because these fundamental Baptist infiltrator Judases, they're so brazen, they're so wicked. I mean, this Cameron Javanelli who committed statutory rape and, you know, just committed this this uh, predatory act on a teenage girl and kept in touch with her and all this stuff. There's there's all this evidence. There are witnesses. It's documented. And they try to just sweep it under the rug. And then not only that, but the filthy pervert, and I, I'm just going to cut loose because this show is called Uncensored, okay? This filthy pervert, Greg Neal, okay, who videotaped women getting dressed in his office. And look, I made diligent inquiry into that. I watched the video that's censored by the police as the black bars up and everything. And look, it is clear that he is guilty. In fact, the police department said that Greg Neal, that they had just overwhelming evidence of his guilt, but that it was just beyond the statute of limitations. And I would encourage anyone uh, who doubts his guilt. Just read the article written by Peter Hyatt. Just Google the statement analysis of Greg Neal's non-denial. You can't even call it a denial. It's a non-denial because he doesn't deny it. Okay. He lies through his teeth and makes it sound like he's denying it. But this pervert Greg Neal, who's a voyeur who abused his uh, college students by having girls get changed in his office while he's videotaping, Okay, and then he's teaming up with Cameron Javanelli, statutory rapist, and they're starting a Bible college and they have this conference called the Preacher's Delight Conference where they've got Bob Gray. And we we know that he, of course, is connected with that Born That Way Ministries pervert. So we've got Bob Gray, the pervert, who's best buddies with David Hiles, the pervert. And then you've got Greg Neal, the pervert. And then you've got Cameron Jeff. It's a pervert convention. Your thoughts? Yeah, that's what makes me sick. So, I mean, obviously this, you know, uh, Pastor Stacey Shiflett blew the lid on this whole thing over a year ago. So the thing is, everybody knows about this. Everybody knew about Greg Neal. Everybody knows about Cameron Giovanelli. Yet they're able to schedule this Preacher's Delight conference and it was interesting, you know, I'll name off the speakers that were originally on there. It was Greg Neal, Scott Caudill, Daryl Cox, Justin Cooper, John Hamblin, Joe Arthur, my favorite camp meeting preacher, J.C. House, Tom Neal, Shelton Smith, 
Bob Gray Sr., Terrell Hopkins, Alan Domley, Don Chitty, and Norris Belcher. So the thing is, these guys, knowing that the scandals are just hovering around this church, knowing that guys like David Hiles is down there, they all went ahead and agreed to go to this conference. Why? Because it's it's like a it's just it's a cover up convention. But now this thing um, after uh, Giovanelli, t- him and Tom Neal both put out hit pieces against the victim. A lot of these guys actually backed out. And so uh, from my sources, they're telling me John Hamblin, Shelton Smith, Joe Arthur, and Norris Belcher and Scott Caudill have all backed out. And I believe Daryl Cox and Justin Cooper. I'm not positive about that. So most of their speakers are backing out now. But the thing is, they're all being quiet about it. John Hamblin, just now, after Cameron Giovanelli gets arrested, he finally publicly announces that he's not going to be at the conference. But he mentioned that he decided two months ago, which apparently I think most of those guys did, from what I understand. But they're being hush-hush because they're scared to death of the Neals. These guys are like Baptist mafia and like Tom Neal is like the godfather. They're scared to death of these guys. So my question is, is, you know, when is JC House, Terrell Hopkins, Don Chitty, Bob Gray Sr. and Alan Domley going to back out of this conference? Now, Bob Gray Sr. is a member there, so I think he's committed. And Alan Domley, his dad was also a, a preacher that was a pervert who is in prison right now. So I think it's safe to say... And he defends him. Right. So I think it's safe to say he'll stay there. So the thing is that just makes me sick about all of this is just the fact that all these guys, even though they knew about this, were still willing to support it just because it wasn't, you know, uh, fully uncovered yet. You know, they're just willing to take their lame little denials and things. These the, And the, the thing that bothers me, they're backing out, but they're not st- taking strong stands against them. They're not being public about it. They're not calling these guys out. And the, the thing is, you know, people say, you guys need to mind your own business. It's none of your business. But it is our business because these guys call themselves IFB, and people try to attach this stuff to us. And we have a no pervert policy in our church. And a lot of Baptists have a no pervert policy, but then you've got just cover-ups abounding and no one calling it out. And every one of these guys who originally agreed to this conference, they supported Greg Neal, knowing the controversies that were surrounding him. And now that he the wind is so shifted, guilty, I, I looked into it. I, I looked at all the evidence he is super guilty. There's no way that Greg Neal wasn't guilty. That's what the police department said. That's what the evidence all showed. And you know what? It's like you said. It's our business because they are giving the independent fundamental Baptist movement a bad name. And, you know, if they stop calling themselves independent Baptists, if they take Baptists off sign and start calling them, you know, grace, fag-loving idiot church, then we'll mind our own business and leave them alone. Right. But, you know, if they're going to drag the name of Christ in the mud and drag the Baptist name in the mud and specifically the independent fundamental Baptist name through the mud, we have to make it clear. Hey, we're not that kind of Baptist. If you're a pedophile in our churches and we find out you're going to the police, your name's mud, we will destroy you. And you know what? Hey, we had a, a preacher friend of ours who was, you know, going out and, 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 you know, going to casinos, using the church's money, visiting prostitutes. Hey, we publicly exposed him and condemned him. We refused to sweep anything under the rug. The old IFB wants to be like the Roman Catholic Church and hide all this stuff. Hey, we're putting it all out in the open. And publicly did it, I mean, within day. I mean, like the next day or hours pretty much of it being uncovered. You know, we don't cover it up for a long time, wait months and all the things like they do, and then have some, you know, read some document that a lawyer went over before we say anything. And, you know, and not only that, I mean, you as his sending pastor were the one that did it. You didn't try to cover for yourself and makes you, you you know, expose it exactly the way these guys should be doing it. And it is, it is so revolting and I, I can't believe there's not more people in the old IFB standing up. You know, thank God there's people like Stacy Shiflett 
Amen. who has stood up, and he's taken a beating for it. You know, he's not getting asked to speak at a lot of these conferences, but, you know, thank God he had the guts to do what he did and and take that beating. But I I pray that, you know, it's a wake-up call, and I'm hoping it becomes, a, you know, the next big thing, the next cool thing to do to expose perverts because there's a lot more that needs to be exposed. And, I mean, I know personally of some – now that I, I, you know, I'm waiting for the full official stories. I'm hearing things through the grapevine, but I'm wondering: Are there popes? Are there got you know? Are there sending preachers? Are they going to expose these guys, or are they just going to cover up and try to relocate them? Because I can we, promise you, if, if they do, if I get the story, you better know I'm going to be saying something. It's about it's it. wicked as hell to cover this up, and they try to justify it like, well, you know, it's it gives the cause of Christ a bad name. Let's just keep it quiet, publish it, not in Gath or whatever stupid arguments that they have where they twist scripture. You know what gives us a bad name is if we lie and cover things up. If we tell the truth, look, the Bible guaranteed us in Second Peter chapter two. There will be false prophets among us. There will be people who creep in unawares. There will be damnable heresy. There will be the, the predators and the people who defile the flesh like Sodom and Gomorrah. Jude and 2 Peter 2 guarantee that they will be among us. There will be Judases. The difference is, how are we going to respond to it? I'll tell you how I'm going to respond to it. I'm going to blow the whistle. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to blow it open wide. And, you know, you say people are afraid of the Neal. I'm not afraid of that slob Tom Neal. You know, if you watch this, yeah. Tom Neal, you're a piece of crap, Tom Neal. Okay, that's what well, you are, you big, fat piece of crap. What are you going to do well, about Tom, it, punk? I'll tell you what Tom Neal will do about it. He'll write a stupid blog post about it. That nobody's going like, to read. Yeah, and here's the thing with Tom Neal. See, Tom Neal is from that older generation. He, he's delusional. He does not realize the day and age we're in where people actually can not have a response. He comes from a day and age where only a few guys had the platform where only a few guys had a say in anything, they could get up there, they could beat their chest, they could say what they wanted to say, and no one was allowed to respond. No dissenting opinion was allowed. Those people weren't going to get their articles put in the revival fires or the sword of the Lord or whatever. But there's a new day and age that we live in now where other people's voices can be heard, and these guys, they cannot handle any scrutiny. Tom Neal's article that he wrote against Pastor Stacy Shiflett for blowing the lid on Cameron Giovanelli was one of the dumbest things I ever read in my life. He got on there talking all smart and how how they had a trained, uh, you know, professional watch that video of Pastor Shiflet and say, you know, and this trained professional figured out that you know what this man probably it was a victim of some kind of abuse at one time in his life. He probably you know had some bad experience and therefore he's lashing back out. And what the big dumb idiot didn't realize is Stacey Shifflin in his video said that he was a victim of abuse at one time. <laughs> but life. he needed a professional to tell he him needed a what, what, what Shifflin explicitly said in the video. And Absolutely. Now, I haven't read I haven't read uh, Pastor Shifflin's book, but my wife did read it, and my wife said that it's highly recommended. She loved the book. It's my understanding that you love the book as well, right, Brother McMurtry? Oh, absolutely. I thought it was great. So, I mean, if, if people, you know, are interested in the subject— you know, of of blowing the whistle on these freaks and understanding that, yes, yeah, Second Peter 2 is true. These people creep in. And yeah. you know what? Th we need to just take the gloves off. Amen? You know, what, and, and the old IFB is like the Roman Catholic Church or something if they want to just hide this stuff. And you know what? If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. If you're in these churches and you're and you're going along with these, these crowds and everything, I mean— how can you just sit by and let these people get shuffled around? Good, stinky yeah. night. Yeah, it's it's horrible. You know, and I just listened to, uh, today to a message. It was actually preached over a year ago by Pastor Shiflet called "Hanged and Drowned," I believe. And um, he was he was talking about perverts. He was talking about how, like the Bible says, they're better off dead. He was saying how they are not allowed in that church. If you're somebody who has a past with pedophilia or whatever. You know, you're not allowed in that church. And, you know, and it, it appears he's not exactly where we are on the reprobate doctrine and everything. But, you know, at least he has a policy. No perverts in their church. They're not going to try to reform them in their church. They're not going to they're just they're They're not welcome there. They have too many children around there mm -hmm. and they have to protect their children. And 
the reason I think I enjoyed that book so much, well, you know, there's little details in there and things that I didn't uh, completely agree with. The thing is, he's taken a strong stand against perverts. He's taken a strong stand against trying to rehabilitate these people. He's taken a strong stand against cover-ups. And it was just a breath of fresh air to hear someone from the old IFB taking that stand. And I think I thank God for him. I support him. I, I think he's a great guy. Uh, and I, I wish him the best and I hope, I, I hope that he can make a difference in that area. And I think, he, I think he has. You yeah. Know, and, think- and here's the thing, even if the old IFB doesn't wise up to the reprobate doctrine, if they would all just take Stacy Shiflett's stand, we'd be happy with it. Absolutely. We'd be satisfied at least with that. Amen. Uh, absolutely. I think, I think that'd be great if they would all just do it like, do like he does adopt his policies. Then I think, you know, I we think live with that, fine. right? Absolutely. Maybe we'd start restoring our reputation. But, you know, I think it's interesting how our crowd were always getting bashed by the news media for hating on perverts, you know, but then you've got the same news media. They bash the old IFB for covering up for perverts. And it's like either way, we're going to get hated. They are so scared of negative attention. They are so scared of the news media. The news media is going to hate them either way. So they might as well protect their people and rid the place of the perverts. But I want to I want to say this too. Uh, I'll probably just leave it in a comment. But I've got all of these guys their Twitter uh, names because these people they live on Twitter. That's kind of their social media. Yeah, that's, that's like they the, their their older generation. They're really into Twitter. It seems like right. Yeah, and they're terrified of they're terrified of negative attention Well, start reading them off because i don't know how yeah. to use twitter i've been trying to figure it out for the last decade and i just gave up a long time ago but can you start reading off their twitters do you have it handy and and those I that do. are twitter a, savvy need to just I start bombarding it. these people about this camera javanelli thing absolutely so the uh the actual conference they have a page it's called at preacher delight so anything you tweet if you if you put at preacher delight on there and people search that everything's going to come up that has that at preacher delight on there and so you want them to see your stuff you want to have a link to this video uh, we'll probably make some clips just of this section about it you're going to want to share this thing like crazy on Twitter but you're also going to want to put the names of these uh, other people on that same thing so anyone who searches at Dr John N Hamblin will also. Uh, see it. John Hamblin will see it. So there's at Dr. John N. Hamblin, at Justin Coop, S. Cooper, at Bob Gray, SR Senior, at Tom Neal underscore Berean. Make sure he sees this video. Um, at Pastor Greg Neal, at Dr. Scott Caudill, at Old Paths Journal, that's Alan Domeles, at Dr. Shelton L. Smith. Dr. Joe Arthur, Preacher Hopkins, and then the at Preacher Delight. There's a couple guys on there. Uh, I don't think they have Twitter. There's Don Chitty. I couldn't find a Twitter for him. Uh, JC House. I don't. Most of those guys, I don't know who they were. Man, I Sheldon to, Smith but, is on there. I, I'd love to see the Sword of the Lord do a whole big story on this. Well, the Blow Sword the of whistle. the Lord. The Sword of the Lord did do a very weak article. Uh, after Stacy Shiflet made the video, I forgot what it was about. It was clearly directed at Stacy Shiflet, but he tried to kind of play both sides and talk about we got to be careful about rushing to judgment and things like. It was super, super weak, but um, yeah, that was. But it was, it was like the Sword of the Lord usually is. Yeah. What about the vi- hey, hey Shelton Smith? What about the video of Greg Neal walking up and adjusting the video camera? You can see him actually manipulating the video camera in the video where the girls are getting changed in his office. And well, the police said that was plenty of evidence, but the statute of limitations is up. You, you know, let's not rush to judgment or anything. It's a pervert convention, folks. Absolutely. And here's the thing these people need to understand. You know, Tom Neal and these guys, they all like to talk about how, you know, we need to let the proper authorities handle this. Well, I agree we need to turn these things over to the police and everything, but as when these type of things happen in the church, the church is the best people to judge the situation. Obviously, we can't put a Cameron Giovanelli into prison or anything like that. But you better believe if something like that happens in our church, we are the proper authorities to judge it. 
And Calvary Baptist Church in Dundalk, Maryland is where these things took place. Calvary Baptist Church in Dundalk, Maryland, they judge the situation, determine they the guy was him. guilty. Hey, they ba- whatsoever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever happened yeah, to that, that scripture? Yeah, but well, these guys don't use that scripture. They don't believe they in that, want, huh? They want the government to figure it out. So the problem is the government has the statute of limitations. So Greg Neal got off scot-free because of statute of limitations, but the church doesn't have a statute of limitations. Well, and, and here's my question, too. Why does Cameron Javanelli sound like a total fag? Well, that's why these guys, you know, we get criticized for just, you know, condemning people because of their skinny jeans, looking like a fag or whatever. But, you know, it's high time we start holding people accountable for looking like a queer, talking like a queer. Yeah, and then you're shocked that's when they're a, when they're a predator, when they when they they act like a sodomite, and then you wonder why they're praying. And by the way, folks, newsflash: sodomites prey on both male and female. Read Judges 19. They take the female <laughs> as the consolation prize. Absolutely, and I believe Pastor Shiflet talked about this in his book. I, I don't want to add something to his book that's not there. I, do, I I read something about this. I think it was in his book where he talks about how even in nature, animals. They there's things in animals that help them to be able to sense when danger is around. They can tell. And God has put things in us to be able to sense when danger is around. And God has put something in these fags so they reveal themselves so our gaydar can go off and we can know we need to watch out and stay away from these people. But we've had it shoved down our throats and we've been brainwashed with this don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Boy, if we would start using these God-given senses that he put in us, then it would save us from a lot of harm and heartache because so many times, I mean, I met Mike Zachary at Providence Baptist College. He did a music thing there, and my gaydar went off like crazy. My wife, within five seconds of hearing his voice, said that he was a sodomite. Mike Zachary, the first time she heard his voice. And then my ministry leader at First Baptist Church of Hammond said, hey, that guy used to go to college here. He's a sodomite. It was like common knowledge. And then he got busted being a sodomite, and he's still on staff at a fundamental Baptist church in San Diego, California, right now, even though he's already been busted being a sodomite. Absolutely, yeah. And the thing is, when it it registered with me, it was when I shook his hand. He had that just creepy dead fish hand shake. And, you know, but the thing is, I mean, most of the time when my gaydar goes off of these people, it ends up coming to pass. And you know what? When you're getting creeped out by people, you know, that's not enough for you to just go blowing the whistle on these people and declaring to the world that they're a fag. But it is enough where you need to be careful and you need to watch yourself with these people. And it's enough not to uh, ordain them and put them behind the pulpit if, if they're just obviously flamboyantly queer why would you then like elevate them to positions of leadership in the church right when they're so questionable right and yeah and pastor shiflet talked about that in his book too with the with the pastor um who had tried to molest him Uh, that's just a it's a horrible story you know he talks about how all the signs that were there before but part of it was he was just so innocent you know that a lot of it went over his head but the thing is You know, there were a ton of signs before things actually happened the way they did. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important that we pay attention to these signs uh, and that we protect ourselves. And I'm telling you, you know, I'm I'm going to keep if if people look like a queer, act like a queer, I'm going to treat them like one. And I'm not going to have them come preach in my church. I'm not going to be friends with them. And I'm going to I'm going to you know keep my family. Uh, away from them Amen. but i i really i really encourage people uh, i'll leave i'll leave all of these twitter names in the comments and i want you to go i want you to copy and paste those and i want you to go leave some tweets uh, about these things uh all, yeah well all, all they the have Twitter. to do they, they should tweet the police report tweet right. the stories in the media and say hey you know you're gonna go preach at this church tweet the greg neal uh article Right. Where, where Greg yeah. Neal is exposed. Right. Now, I don't have Twitter, so some, some people are going to have to kind of help get some of these things out there. I'll also put a link. I've got it right in front of me of the um, uh, just a news report of the arrest of Cameron Giovanelli. It's got a stupid mug shot in there. Looks like he's got yeah, a hickey And here's on the his thing. Neck. If, you know, if we blow the whistle on these people and people still want to go to their church anyway and they still want to go to these conferences anyway, 
you know what? Then they deserve to be around these people then. Right. But at least people should be warned, you know, and people should know. And you know what? The party's over for these freaks because the Internet makes it easy to expose them. Exactly. The party's over, pedophiles. Yep. Yeah. And I. I and voyeurs I mean, I, I and other guys, predators. Yeah. It, it's it's high time that these, you know, these guys that are on this list, you know, the Shelton Smith, they need to start fearing associating with perverts. They need to realize there's going to be a backlash for it. It's going to get attached to them. And, you know, that's why we expose people as fast as we do whenever they turn out to be perverts or even just heretics. I don't want that stuff being attached to me. And it, it's going to happen. And so it, these guys, they need to pay a price for this. I think some of these guys that are on this list, I mean, I I, I want them to be good guys. I, I like some of these guys. I've you know, I've always liked Shelton Smith. I've I've heard Joe Arthur preach several times. Uh, I I like him as a as a person, but the thing is, if he's gonna hang out with Greg Neal's, then he needs to pay the consequences for it. And then if he's gonna, when the wind shifts, is just gonna quietly back out. That's not enough. He needs to make it very public. He needs to let people know why. But and they've got to stop being scared of Tom Neal. That guy carries no clout anymore maybe in their little circle he does but i'm telling you that guy's nothing to fear he's 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 done for he's a paper his, tiger his time has passed well you know what thank god that whole bogus generation's passing off the scene anyway that 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 generation that that did not honor the lord in their hearts that wicked and adulterous generation and hopefully we can see a new generation rise up of independent fundamental Baptists that don't put up with this garbage. And that when somebody is caught, you know, in flagrante doing these wicked things, then, you know, they need to be destroyed. They need to be arrested. They need to be turned over to the police. They need to be blackballed, not just, well, you know, let's just kind of put them on the shelf for a little while and restore them and whatever. No, if you are a predator you're done. Game over. Yep. And you've and thing is, people, you've got to be public. And here's the problem. You know, when you get to know other preachers and things, you know, you get attached, your friends, you get emotional. Uh, I understand that. It's hard. But we have a responsibility. And, you know, I hate to say it, but a guy that I knew, well, I, I, I've known his wife since she was real small, got busted molesting boys in his youth department for years. Mm -hmm. His name was Jacob Coyle. He was a part of Averyville Baptist Church in Peoria, Illinois. I hate to bring him up, but you know what? Apparently months ago he got busted, and it took me months before I even found out about it, before I even knew a thing about it. And the thing is, he's gone to court. He was found guilty. He is in prison. And I haven't heard one person say a thing about it. How come nobody is saying anything about it? How come... I'm hearing guys like him apparently had molested young girls in the past, and it was known. And it was swept dad, was under the, the rug. And it you know what? Swept under the rug. When my he didn't sister, want to ruin his life. Yeah, and well, well I want to ruin his life. I did. Yeah, these me pedophiles. Too. And you know, I remember when my sister was in New Mexico. There was a pastor. I don't remember his name, but he was caught in the park. The police did a sting operation where they caught him in the park with like. 20 other sodomite dudes, okay, just having some bizarre, I don't even want to say, it's a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret, but they're busted in the bushes, and they were within so many hundred feet of a school, and they're just committing the worst acts of, of, of perversion, men with men, working that which is unseemly. This pastor was there, okay, and he got arrested, and it put the faces. It was like 19 guys were arrested. Their faces were all on the news. Their faces were all in the newspaper. He was fined $150. That was the punishment that the government gave him for just this public act of filth within inside of a school, and you know, in the bushes or whatever. And my sister, I kid you not, went to a preaching conference like a week and a half later at a church like 45 minutes away, and that guy just showed up and was just sitting in the audience and nobody said anything to him. Nobody oh. said he, his name was all over the news. His face was all over the news. He was caught in flagrante being a homo at the park. 
and he just shows up. And then the pastor, or it wasn't a pastor that was preaching, it was an evangelist that was preaching, and the evangelist was literally a blind man, like he could not physically see. He was like a blind evangelist. And he was preaching, and he ripped on the sodomites in the sermon, and my sister said that this guy that had been arrested a few weeks earlier and paid the $150 fine literally like snickered and laughed when the preaching on on sodomites came okay but nobody said anything you know uh, but my my sister you know she didn't want to speak up because you know she's a woman she's keeping silent in the church she was kind of like and it just kind of you know you get caught off guard she didn't know what to do but was there not some hair-legged man in that church like the pastor of the church or you know preachers who knew this guy because this guy's preaching peers were there somebody would have said hey faggot get the hell out of here well i'm just gonna say it right now any preacher that i know if i find out he's a homo or a pervert i'm gonna say his name publicly amen so the thing is people better not tell me these secrets if they don't want it getting out because i will get it out if i know these people once i can confirm it's a fact i'm not just gonna go spreading rumors and, and things like that but, you know, you show me the evidence that it did, in fact, happen. Yeah, two or three I'm witnesses, gonna, diligent right. inquiry is made. Then what are you going to do? Right. And just so people know, in case people who, uh, you know, know me and know me for a long time, apparently I'm hearing one of my old friends uh, is a pervert, too. I haven't got the official full story on that, but I can promise you as soon as I do, I will be saying his name publicly. Mm -hmm. And I... I pray that I said I apparently he's being investigated and stuff right now. If it turns out that he did in fact do that, I hope he goes to prison. And and I will say his name because I promise you this guy is very well connected. He will get relocated if the if the government doesn't do anything about him, he will be pastoring another church. Uh, you know, John Jenkins is another guy too that uh, I I can't believe all the perverts he had in his church. And I I know a bunch I've you know met a lot of these people before, and found out. In fact, um, I had a lady from there that called me and was telling me about all this these scandals there, and all these perverts. And I'm I'm just I'm asking her about all these people that I knew there, and about half the people I'd ask her about were in fact perverts and had been busted and things. Thankfully, a lot of them hadn't. You know, there there were some decent ones there, but somebody's got to name these people. Somebody. In yeah, fact, and, and speak, group, speaking of the name, naming the names real quick, um, uh -huh. you know, them in the sound room, they just Googled it. That New Mexico guy was this uh, Don Corley. He's like he was like 70 years old, this dirty old man who was out in that park by the school that got arrested. Wow. Tell him to look up uh, Jacob Coyle from Averyville Baptist mm -hmm. Church or not. Uh, yeah. Averyville Baptist Church. That's another one. So you know, nobody knows about it. Nobody, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's, you know, publicly come out and condemned, condemned this. Nobody's talking about the fact that he was a known pervert and was not exposed and was put as the youth pastor in that church. And whoever Apparently, put him in that position needs to be held accountable, too. If they knew absolutely. that 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 was his proclivity and that he had done that filth in the past. It's like, look, folks, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that if the ox has already gored someone in time past and pushed with his horn and you knew that the, that he was wont to do so in time past, if you don't keep him in, then you get the same punishment that that beast gets. Yep. So whoever puts him in charge of the youth when they know he's a pedophile is a freak, too, and they need to be destroyed as well. Well, this is why we've got people have got to teach a reprobate doctrine. Amen. Everyone thinks these people can be rehabilitated and be restored. They cannot. They cannot. And we have to keep thundering that from the pulpit. More people need to be preaching the truth on that. They are constantly trying to rehabilitate these people. And listen, even if you think a pervert can be rehabilitated, the fact that you've done something perverted, it ought to disqualify you forever from the ministry. Yeah, even if you, and, even if you, even if you were stupid enough to believe that you could fix these pedophiles and rehabilitate them, then why can't they just go get a job at the auto parts store or something? Why can't they just get a job, you know, collecting trash? Although that job is, uh, you know, I don't even want them at the auto parts store. I don't even want them picking up my trash. But right. what kind of a crazy person would put them in the ministry? But uh, being in the ministry, a pastor, whatever, I mean, that is 
a that is a position of trust. And these people, they've got to be held to a higher standard. And it is not asking too much to just have a zero tolerance policy with these people and, you know, deal harshly with it. Make sure that it's known who they are. It's known what they did and make sure that they are never in a position of trust again. And I, I think, you know, it's time the you know, law enforcement even does something about it because some of these people, too, have been convicted of things. And yet they're still I mean, I don't know if I want law enforcement getting involved in what's going on in churches. But good night. When it comes to perverts, they need to do something. They need to do something with these. Well, people. I thought I mean, isn't it already? I, I, I thought they already should. They should already have a policy that I thought these people are like registered sex offenders. And because here's the thing. We had a guy show up at our church two months ago and he walked into the church and he wanted to talk to me, but I didn't have time to talk to him. So, you know, I had him talk to one of my staff members, Brother Chris Segura, and, and, and he told Brother Chris Segura, well, legally, I have to tell you guys that I'm a registered sex offender. I have to warn you guys about that, you know, um, and, and apparently he'd been convicted of some pedophile offense. And, and, and Chris Segura just threw him out and told him to never come back and that he cannot attend. But, mm-hmm. but, but I mean, apparently well, by law, this guy had to declare that to us so well, that we would know thinking, to keep him away from children. But maybe that's just Arizona or I don't know. Right. Well, and a lot of this, too, it's people who were like a, adulterers and things like that, you know, that didn't ne- do anything that was technically illegal, but, you know, immoral, whatever. And they, they're they often, you know, restoring it, it, these look, churches. Look, if you're committing adultery with someone else's wife in the church, okay, you should never be in the ministry again. That is that is horrific. Leviticus 20 verse 10 says that the person who lays with his neighbor's wife should surely be put to death. I mean, that's a mm. horrible offense. And it's it's predatory if they were using a position of power to do it. It's sort of like when Bill Clinton used the fact that he's a president in order to get favors from an intern. OK, mm-hmm. that's considered wicked and immoral, even by the world, even by people who are OK with fornication and are OK with adultery. When someone's in a position of power or authority, like a teacher, a professor, a pastor, a staff member of a, of a church, a manager, a president of a company, then and, and then they use that to commit adultery with someone's wife. I mean, that is just so horrific. And obviously the pedophiles are a no brainer. The old IFB, some of them aren't even stupid enough to take the pedophiles out of the ministry, but they, you know, they at least need good night. How can they not, if somebody's committing adultery, they should never be pastor again. That should be a no brainer. Yeah. Uh, it seems pretty cut and dry and simple to me, but unfortunately uh, everybody, everybody's all we, you know, we gotta, we gotta restore these people. You know, they're, they're under satanic attack. I just heard him say about this one guy, uh, you know, and he said, I still don't know the specifics, so I don't want to say anything, but they were like talking about this demonic attack that took place. But the thing is, he is the not demon. Talk- He's the one. Well, that's, that's the thing. They're not talking about it. Like, you know, you know, the demonic attack was on what he did. You know, it's like, you know, the demons, uh, you know, they're, they're attacking him. And like he's the victim because he's really such thing. a good guy. So the devil's trying to attack him pretty much. You know, he's stuff. got a great yeah. big target on his back because all he's doing for the Lord. Yeah, it and, gets me mad. But they do, man. They they go into these stupid platitudes and things. And, you know, but for the grace of God, there go I. Yeah, you know? speak for yourself. Just, and you know what? Any pastor who says, but for the grace of God, there go I. Just take his word for it. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy is <laughs> yeah. on that path or, or close. It, you know, it, it, when they get up and say, oh, well, we could all end up going to speak for yourself, freak. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's there's sins out there that I got to guard myself on. But that's just that's not one of them. And I worry about these people that act like it's a normal thing. And, you know, it could happen to anybody. We, we all let our, we all have a we propensity. let our guard down for one moment. You know, it could <laughs> it could happen. Yeah. yeah, we all have a propensity to sin. We mm. all have temptations to sin. But you know what? When you see a man who's 50 years old praying upon a teenager or even praying upon children. And so, that's not normal. That's just bizarre. No. Well, just remember, and such were some of you. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, their, that's, their, that's their go-to verse. You know, they had child predators oh, in Paul's day oh, in church. Sure, and, right. Yeah, whatever. It's like, it's like, shut up, you idiots. Just, just anything 
to not have to do something that's unpopular. Yeah. Because once again, people get emotional. They love the assistant pastor. You know, they, and, but man, sometimes you just have to do the right thing. And that's why it, it helps a lot if you make these decisions ahead of time. Yeah. You know, just mark it down, run your mouth about it. That way there's no turning back. That if you know, it turns out you're a pervert, you're gone. You're his. Well, I want to scare off the freaks anyway, because if the I freaks know going in, hey, if you pull this crap at our church, you're going to, you're going to get turned over to the police and you're going to be publicly exposed and blackballed on the Internet. Then hopefully they're just going to pick another church because I want my kids and my church to be safe. And, and I want it to be known there's zero tolerance and horrible things will happen to you if you are a pedophile and you try to creep in. You are messing with the wrong people. That needs to be the message that we send. Right. And old IFB is sending a message. Come on in, perverts. Roll out the red carpet and whatever. Right. And the thing is, too, man, if they try anything around here, you know, they need to know that if, if they get caught, we're not calling the police until we've, you know, <laughs> done all we can to physically stop them. And we just might go yeah. a little overboard. You yeah, know. I mean, you you know, you're going to use a lot of force, whatever force is necessary to stop them right. so from from abusing a child. Amen. Exactly. You know? so. You're going to use reasonable and prudent force. I, I, I trust your judgment over there. I'm sure you guys are going to going to, uh, you know, keep it with you. Keep it restrained, you know, to <laughs> hint, hint, yeah. wink, wink. Not, not. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. It was but, great talking to you. I, I think I'm going to take a few more calls before yes, we sir. before we call it a night. But uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having the info. And you know, people ought to be outraged. You know, and, and you know that there's some bozo sitting at home right now, like, oh, why are you so mad? Why are you so angry? Why are you so? You know, if this stuff doesn't make you mad, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, okay? you're a pervert. Yeah, it when when children are being abused and their lives are being ruined. Okay, anybody who has children and loves their children is going to be shocked and horrified and want blood. Okay, and, and and don't come at me with your with your oozing, dripping. You're just so forgiving of every freak and pedophile. You're probably a pervert yourself if you sympathize with these devils. That is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible is crystal clear how God feels about these people and how we should feel about these people. These are not your garden variety sinners. These are evil, reprobate, God-hating devils. And the Bible is crystal clear in Old and New Testament what they have coming to them. But, man, it was great talking to you. Thanks for all the info and, and the great insight. Yep, I will put all their Twitter names uh, on the comments as soon as I'm able to and hammer them on Twitter. They can't take the heat. No, they can't. All right, God bless you. Thanks for being on. Yeah, they, these people, they, they, they can't take the heat. They don't like the light being shined on them because they have so many skeletons. They have so much to hide. And, you know, look, folks, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. But, folks, this isn't just sin. This is violent crime. This is the worst filth and perversion, and it has to be dealt with. And, and sweeping it under the rug, leave that to the dress-wearing guy who calls himself father and dresses like his mother in the Roman Catholic Church. All right, let's take another call.